this is so awkward. I probably fell into it. Today? I gotta put them on the calendar. Nice. I could have gone. Yeah. I was just home. Nice, James. Yeah. You're killing me. Yeah, dude. This is not. He's making Lee J sit in the back row. What's up with that? We think we're so fucking you guys. He's here for mo emotional support. <laughs> Transition. Uh, yeah. It's like Ready Mix might not come tonight. When was the last time you talked to them? I talked to them last week. That's regular. That's not Northeast Ready Mix. That's other Ready Mix. The other side of the street. Uh -huh. This Pike Ready Mix or Pike Ready Mix. What? It's a missed something. What do they want? I see what you did. It's the one that wanted to wash for it and then hasn't done anything with it. The what? The wash for it place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they they got approval for a wash for it and then they haven't constructed it yet. Forty five so. seconds. Over a year. Yeah, it hasn't been anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Check. Oh, that's gonna come in. Yeah. <coughs> Tab is ready mix on Big Jam. Four. Should be, it's like. You guys all set? Yeah. Okay. Ready? All right. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, February 20th, 2020. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, planning board members present tonight. We have Sean Winston. <clears throat> we also have Mike LaRue. We have alternate David Ross Lyons. And Frank is not here tonight. Also, Nicole's not here tonight. So, Dave, you'll be voting tonight. We also have um, code enforcement officer here, planner, and uh, chief planner. I don't know. What's your title? Chief planner? Senior contract planner? Planners. Contract planner. <laughs> Opening up the public comment session, it's open to any resident property owner in Berwick to come talk about the um, anything that relates to the planning board. We are going to be having two public hearings this evening. And if you want to come up and talk about anything, please feel free. Public comment session is open. Otherwise, we're going to have another opportunity for you to talk later on. Did you? Look like you were going to get up. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Seeing nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the February 6, 2020 meeting. And one small little thing. It's page one, two, three, four. Page four in the land use ordinance amendments. It says on the subject of allowing more roads on private roads. There should be more houses, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I think that's the second time I've done that. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that's the only thing that I saw in here. I didn't see anything. Any other changes? No. Nope. Okay, so the motion will be for the approval of minutes as amended. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the um, February 6th planning board meetings as amended, meeting minutes as amended. I'll second. Okay, we have a uh, second for the discussion. All in favor? Okay. Next is a public hearing, conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront and adult use marijuana production facility, 569 Portland Street, map R72, lot 9-1. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is Straight Fire, F Straight Fire Farm. So this will just be a public hearing just about this application. Public hearing is open. 
anybody would like to come forward and talk about this, we'll be getting back into this in old business. Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Next is another public hearing on the land use ordinance amendments and subdivision regulations amendment. This is just to discuss the changes uh, to the land use ordinance and subdivision regulations that we've been working on over the past um, few months. Public hearing is open. Once, going twice, seeing nobody come forward. Um, this is going to be the last time that we're going to talk about the land use ordinance amendments at this meeting. So we're going to close this public hearing then. We don't have to keep it open. Next is old business. <clears throat> Conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront and adult use marijuana production facility. 569 Portland Street, map R72, lot 9-1. It's in the RCI zone and it's straight fire farms is the applicant. James. Sure, the one uh, additional request from last meeting was to see a cut sheet for the rain garden and, and that has been provided. Um, other than that, I um, provided the findings of fact. And, um, yeah, did you want this? You guys the crowd? Did you get one? We got the James just gave these out. So here. He just Oh, well, Nicole's got one too. All right. give a brief history for folks at home. Ron uh, sent an application on November 7th and he's uh, been very patient in, in working through our process. Uh, the uh, proposal is to uh, add on 2,945 square feet to an existing 5,072 square foot building. Part of the existing HP business will be converted to an adult use storefront and the expansion proposed to be an adult use production facility. Uh, rain, garden will be, rain garden will be designed to capture stormwater from the building expansion. Because of the added retail use, seven additional spaces were added and were shown on an additional site plan. The Berwick Police Chief sent a memo on January 9th and it's indicating he reviewed the plan, had no further request. And, um, for the February 6th meeting, the applicant submitted the order control plan, revised site plan, revised narrative. And for tonight, they submitted the details of the rain garden. So I do have the um, findings of fact, and we can we can go through them. I don't need to read the actual um, the standard, but I can read the go through the findings. If you'd like to go through those. That's, so, I mean, I, unless the board wants to hear those, I. I read those yeah, they're pretty Wait, there's no are there any conditions of approval the only uh, condition of approval that I would suggest is that a um, proof of li the license from the state of Maine is provided um, either before occupancy, occupancy permits granted or before operations uh, which is what we <coughs> excuse me which is what we've required of yeah yeah <coughs> yeah I, I think that the state requires that we to get our license we have to come to you and you have to tell the state it's okay that we get it in the first place mm -hmm. so there's a check and balance yep so you get a conditional use approval and then uh just before you i mean you can be able to do your the building work and then before you get a condition of uh, our certificate of occupancy we'll just want to see the state license and then you're good to go any questions from the board I think uh, my only question on the rain garden, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure if this is for you guys or if for Jen, the maintenance, is there a good maintenance plan here for it? How does, how's that going to be overseen? Does that fall to you or, I know maintenance would be on them, but do we, should we be scheduling some sort of a annual inspection? So we can sure? definitely go out and take a look at it. As yeah. often as you want us to, yeah, that's no problem. I mean, <coughs> I think the annual mm. inspection. If you don't smell it, it's good. If you mm -hmm. smell it, it's bad. Time we to can do. <laughs> we, we can do an annual inspection on it. Yep. Yeah. 
No problem. No, I think the the plan the sorry plan for the maintenance is well laid out here. I just think it's a matter of keeping up with that and no problem. Making sure that that's being done. Yeah. And that's something. I know that we're starting to get a few more rain gardens on other plants. And that is something that could be wrapped into licensing. You know, if we see that the rain garden's failing and there's drainage <coughs> problems, then just say, hey, you got to fix your rain garden. And show us your maintenance plan. Yeah, he owns the land. I don't want him coming after me for anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> or having the dog come dog, after yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything yeah, else, Sean? That was my only question. Okay, David? That's no problem. We can do that. My concern um, after seeing it tonight doing the site walk is the parking itself and the number of used cars that are part of the other business with that building and, and making sure that there are designated parking spaces for this. Yeah. I, I mean, I know we're requiring an additional seven seven spots. It's, there's, there's, there's You'd have to come to the microphone, yeah. There's, there's acreage there. I mean, so it's right. No and then part of it is, I mean, you did bring up the fact that you abut North Berwick mm -hmm. and the number of vehicles that you're allowed on that side of the town line. That's that's just a concern. Right, but I mean, there's there's 2.2 acres in that lot, okay. and there's probably you know, uh, half an acre cleared. Okay. So, I mean, in, in, in the back of that, where the addition's going to be, there's, there's additional parking just for that. Okay. As far as that storefront, that all across that whole front is parking all the way to the road. Okay. I mean, you could stack cars in there if you wanted to. You could probably put 25 cars right in the very front. And that's not that's not just the parking. The parking's around the side, too. Okay. So, I, yeah, I mean. No, I'm just saying that's one area that I, I, get that it. I would question. But yeah, but there's, there's no issue with nothing like that. Yeah, it's not like anything's crowded or I mean, there's a lot of space here. In fact, there's, I can't tell you the amount of square footage, but the enormous amount of that's hot topped. Okay. So, so, I mean, it was obviously with snow and stuff and ice today, it was a little hard to see where. Of course, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean, we, we can do anything you want, but there's, there's no issue with that. Okay. Anything else? Mike? No. Nothing? <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, if there are no further questions for the applicant, then we're going to be looking at three votes tonight. First, the findings of fact and the conditions of approval, and then the application in its whole. So uh, the motion would be for approval of the findings of fact. Move that we approve the findings of fact. OK, motion. And we have a second. I'll second. Seconded by David Beachio. <laughs> further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next would be the conditions of approval. Now, James, can you write those? Let's get those conditions of approval down again. Mm -hmm. So just say what they were again, or the one, which is what. Is yeah. Our standard. So it could be. Um, is, would it be prior to receiving an occupancy permit? Is that the way to do it, or would it yeah. be? Yeah. Yeah, I would suggest that it be um, that prior to receiving the occupancy permit, the applicant provides the town with the state license um, approval. Right, and that allows them to do the interior work and then... Correct. Okay, so prior to receiving an occupancy permit, the applicant shall provide proof of state domain license. Okay, so that's the one condition that we have of approval. We have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, conditions. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. Seconded. I think I heard Mike first. <laughs> Can't win them all, Dave. <laughs> okay. Uh, further discussion. All in favor? Okay. And finally, the application in its in its whole. We approve the applicant application. <clears throat> I'll do a motion to approve the application. Okay. There's a motion. I'll second. Seconded. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay. There you go. Thank you. Break ground tonight. Yeah, now they're heading I think you got to. I think you can't make noise after eight. So yeah. We'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Ten o'clock. You're right. Yeah. Uh, next on the agenda is land use ordinance amendments and subdivision regulations amendment. So James. Okay. So from last time, uh, I'm just reading from my memo. Uh, change uh, ordinance amendments one two. Four and ten, uh, four through ten. So basically, nothing's changed except for accessory dwelling units. Um, so I just wanted to point out 
the major things for accessory dwelling units. Um, so reading from, um, so it'd be starting from page two, um, it's changing the definition and the, the key change. So for owner occupied apartments, it's inclusive of the existing building. Um, and a, an accessory dwelling unit could include uh, having an accessory dwelling unit on an accessory building on the same same property. Uh, is is that is that is that too too far for you guys? Do we want to talk about that further? Or is that an okay an okay change? Because that is an, that is a significant change. Yeah. So the so the minimum, the minimum. Um, so looking at number one, mm -hmm. it's it's this it, it's the same math the way that breaks down. It just establishes that uh, the accessory apartment shall be 400 square feet and shall not exceed 50 percent of the total living area of the building. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I missed that part. Oh no problem. So we're going from 1,200 to 400. So. The that's why this is confusing, right? So I, I thought the same thing when I initially read it. All that says, the exi so th this is why we're crossing it out. It says the existing dwelling unit must have a minimum of 1,200 gross square footage. So the existing house or whatever has to be 12, 1,200, but then you could you can make it, um, it does actually doesn't have a, um, a minimum. It just says it can't, the, the old part is that the uh, apartment shall not exceed 30% of the total living area of the building. So that's, so that's again, so when it was on occupied apartments, it's, it, it wasn't saying that you need to have an accessory apartment of 1,200 square feet. It was saying to create an owner, owner and occupied apartment, you need to have that, and then you can chunk out of that 1,200 living square feet into a smaller Correct. apartment. I, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense now. Yeah. That, that was not worded very well no, initially, and, yeah. And that's, we had a heck of a time. To be considered for an accessory apartment. Right. Okay, yeah. We've, we've had a, a, a hard time trying to understand what it was talk like what it meant. So if we had a hard time, I mean, the public would have no chance. Uh, the state, I actually, in the, I've been reading a lot on um, um, the Growth Management Act, and they actually now have a new section in 2019, which specifies uh, encouraging accessory dwelling units. I thought that was pretty funny. So, and the other significant change would be allowing, so if somebody wanted to have an accessory dwelling unit on their, on their apartment, striking number four allows them to expand their house a little more. Mm -hmm. You know what I really want to talk about is marijuana. <laughs> so are we good? Are we good with the, that part of assessor <clears throat> dealing units? Because this this is the first step, and I'll and I'll I'll say this and kind of walk away from it is the whole tiny homes mm -hmm. discussion. So tiny homes are defined in the state of Maine as 400 square feet or less. But that's for another day. Yeah, I remember sending you that article. Yeah, last summer. Yeah. yeah. So, so some, um, you were gonna no. <laughs> I was going to say something. Oh, if if we strike number four for no external expansion, it means you can expand outside the footprint of the house to mm -hmm. put in the accessory dwelling unit. Um, at what point do setbacks come into play? They all always always come. Always. Okay. Also, I I thought of a standard that like we don't but just not mentioning that I don't. I don't want somebody to think they can do it. Look, reading this and not be held to the <clears throat> setbacks. I can add that. Um, no, that's well, a good point. 
Because, I mean, if I, you know, if you're a homeowner and you're looking, oh, can I put in an accessory dwelling unit, they're probably going to just go and look at this section. I mean, they'll have to come to her anyways for a permit. So at that point. Yeah. One thing th that Kenny Bunk has is that their expansion needs to fit with their house. You know, it has to aesthetically fit in. It can't just be some ugly expansion. So that's something that we can also add in there that has to fit with our house. Yeah, I think maybe just somewhere reference wherever we have setbacks in the in coordinates. Reference that section. So number five. They know. So number five says right now the dimensional standards found in 6.3 are waived. It yeah, says it right now. Wanna, yeah, we don't want to waive that. No, 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 no. So that's where I'll put in must yeah, shall no. meet yeah. everything except for the dent. So the accessory dwelling unit is you can have an, an accessory apartment and not need double the minimum lot size. Yeah. That's the only thing that's exempted. Okay. I think we're good on that. Let's see. So yeah, everything else, everything else is squared away for that. I'll just touch upon the subdivision regula uh, regulation amendment again. That's just changing the type of paper upon the requirement. So let's talk about marijuana. The um, favorite topic. The uh, 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 so we have talked about splitting out these uses before. And that's what you're seeing with these loaded definitions here. That's recommended by Phil when he was looking at our, our, our marijuana licensing. Um, I put in not allowing it in CI, which means uh, two Bow Street would be a non-conforming use, and they could they can stay there as a non-conforming use. But that just means they'll be the only one. And if they leave for more than a year. We'll never, we won't have a storefront downtown until if we decide we want one later or never again. Uh, the next row is a marijuana testing facility. So as part of both programs, marijuana needs to be tested. Um, so if one wanted to come in, it's now defined. Um, yeah, and the other one's just a, the cosmetic change. And most, uh, quite a few of these are just, instead of enumerating every possible thing and saying, you know, production facilities, storefronts, medical adult use, it's just marijuana establishments covers them all. And that's also defined. Um, but so we took out the section with the caps. Yeah, okay, let's, you're right, let's cut to the chase. So, based on my discussions, with the select board, <coughs> my so the next next no, the next point is choose your words wisely. Eight point two five point seven. We we'll put back an eight point two five point eight because I think um, what we're going to be asking for is a, a temporary cap that gives us time to go through our workshops and then we can revisit this in November. So that can be put back put back in. But along with that is the recommendation from the select board is to up the ante on the requirements and, uh, and, and, and take from the best of the applications that have been submitted to us and hold that as the standard moving, moving forward. So 8257, that's this is stuff that we well besides one a description of products and service. Well, I mean, we ask for this stuff already, don't we? Besides the neighborhood responsibility plan, the elevations of the buildings um, it's part of site plan review. It's not part of conditional use. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> but you're. I mean, you're right. It's not. I only had so much. You know, so much time to add in. But if else. if we presented this with those caps in there for the time being and if they disagreed with it well it's uh, they can take it out and they cannot put it in so i me personally i want to stand behind this this cap this temporary like a pause really is essentially what i call it and just let things kind of 
play out and see, and then we can come back and readdress this because if, if everything's working great and there's more of a demand, then great, we'll go and we'll change it again. But it was just a pause. You know, this the town, what, five years ago, we had a moratorium on medical marijuana that was approved, right? This isn't a moratorium. This is just a, a, a pause. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I agree. I, I, I think that we're seeing an abundance of applicants. I think that, yes, eventually they will work themselves out and either be in business or not. But I think that taking a pause and looking at our requirements, our licensing, I think it's a good idea. I don't think there should be a cap. But having a temporary cap, as long as we set a date within like a year or two years, that would be okay. But if we don't have a date and then we forget about it, then I think it should be revisited, something that we revisit like yearly on see how everything's going. What's the status of the states? I mean, has the state figured everything out already? Is everything 100% like moving forward, signed, sealed? We, we talked with the uh, marijuana office folks today, and they said that they're going to be releasing licenses, conditional licenses soon, and, but they're not going to allow um, it to officially, for sales to officially start for a couple months. Is, it, is there a pretty much exact quote? That's what they said, yeah. For that's adult use. <clears throat> and, they said, and, they, and they said in terms of, this is a whole separate separate subject but it made me happy that their tracking system they were they seem pretty they're both uh former police officers they seem pretty confident they seem confident that the track and trace system is pretty much foolproof that they're gonna there's gonna be no if someone is from seed to sales trying to get into the black market they're gonna figure it out i mean i'm all about free trade free markets you know because i think it will I think it will work out. Businesses aren't going to sp spend thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on something that's going to fail. I would hope not. I don't, but, you know, and the de it, it all depends on the demand. I mean, there's a reason that we have, like, one convenience store in town, obviously. No one has opened up another convenience. And the ones that we've had haven't lasted. But this is a little different, I think. And I think that all the applicants that we've seen come through here have been great. They've been professional. They're not, you know, a fly-by-night type of operation. It's been great. But, I mean, I. what do you feel about a, a cap? I, I agree, I think. And, you know, I can see Mike's point where we revisit it a year from now. If we get it put in place, we have a date on it. See how it goes. If I mean, and then we have to look at if there's more app, more people interested in applications, I guess. I don't know. I guess I just, I know there was a lot of talk when this all first started to happen that, you know, these business, all these businesses were going to be fantastic and bring all kinds of money into the town. And But I don't really see what the massive benefit that a lot of people were talking about at that time. I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing that. It's just, it's just property tax. Pro property taxes and personal property taxes. Yeah. So, um, I forget the exact math, but t say it's ten million dollars of all these facilities. I mean, you're, I think we're going to reach we're going to reach ten million dollars and increase the assessed value. So it's whatever ten million divided by a thousand times seventeen and a half. Is. Well, if we put a provision in there that we would we would come back and we would we would look at this again in you know in a year, um, and if the select board doesn't like it, they don't have to support it, and they can tell you to take it out of there and. That's that's their choice. Yeah, they could do that. Yeah, they could take a look at everything in here and say no. And right, they could. I mean, they could keep it the <clears> same, <throat> and they, they could recommend a no vote. Or I mean, I, I have a. I mean, I have a feeling it would be if they took a vote, it'd be probably three two no. But even then, things still pass often. Could we put a provision in there? And I think that it's a, it's a good point that we revisit this in. Um, in how would we say this like 2021 one year from the date of, of adoption well i mean we could even yeah we could do that or no or just say well right 
Um, well, we might want to predate it so we could discuss it and change the amendment in enough time so right. then they can address it. You know, yeah. Because, like, it took us, what, three months to get to this You're point You're exactly now. right. So let me think about the exact timeline because I'm trying to get us on the right path so we're not rushing for land use ordinance. Well, it's like December to January is when exactly. we should start talking about this, it. Yeah. You know, end of, end of the new year, or end of the year, beginning right. of the new year. It's probably before Thanksgiving, honestly. Okay. But, yeah. So we're to revisit in November. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing stopping us from having those workshops you know. I think it'll be great to have these businesses coming in here and paying these fees for the license from the town and then all the tax revenue that would be coming into the town. I think it's great. I just think we've got to just be cautious. Just pump the brakes a little bit. Yep, <laughs> I agree. I, yeah, I think, um, yep. It has nothing to do with whether or not I like medical marijuana, recreational marijuana, there's nothing to do with that. It's just, this is just so new and so many things have changed from day one back in 2016 when this was approved by the voters. Well, it was just like what the uh, marijuana policy folks says, we're just trying to regulate it. And I think that's kind of the goal is just try to regulate it. Yeah. All right. What we don't want to happen is to be driving down Route 4 a year from now to all these empty buildings. They put so much money and work into them, and there's too many of them, you know, so. Ghost buildings. Yeah. Yeah. So can, can you write something up? I can, I'll put it back in. Please, with that provision in there as well. And when I go see them on Tuesday, I'll, I'll bring that up and I'll explain it. And if, you know, they could say, no, we don't like that. James, take it out. Then they do. Yep. You know? Works for me. And then we still have, uh, I think we still have one crack at it too. If there's, if there's something we're close at and try to rework the language for one last try. Okay. So I think that's a great strategy moving forward. Okay. Anything else you want to bring up? Uh, it, the, there's a, just a licensing thing. We don't have to go through it. This is just more of an FYI. You just kind of see the language. Um, and kind of the procedure. Now this won't get, is this gonna get voted on in June? Yep. So they set, they have to set the dollar amounts. Have they done that yet? I'm, well, <laughs> I'm recommended 2,500 in Mark's responses, so. It should be. All right, so I'll look more into the. We were all disappointed that the state took a lot away from the towns as far as If you gotta talk, you gotta talk on the mic. It's just so they can hear. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. I understand what you you're have, saying. You have good things to say, so it's just everyone could you, wants to hear. Could you just come up with, find out like what other towns are? Yeah, doing I'll do some more, some more research into it. It's pretty, it's pretty disparate. Like, there's like someone do hundreds. Portland's like ten thousand, but we'll find a, a okay. nice. Okay. All right, and then that'll, then they'll make that. You'll make that recommendation. We'll, they, they're going to have to vote on that and come up with something. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay, so we have to vote on this tonight. The recommendation, yep. We're, yep, so we're the, um, the <clears throat> motion would be for um, approving the land, or, land use ordinance amendments and recommending them to the Board of Selectmen. That's how we do it. I'll make a motion to. Um, no. Okay. Yeah, no. That's what I <laughs> approve, the approve, approve the land use ordinance uh, amendments and subdivision regulation amendments and send those recommendations to the select board. See you the condition of application. Oh. Do we have a second? Um, I will second. Seconded. Further discussion? Good okay. All in favor? All right. Uh, next on the agenda is this applicant is not here. Yeah, it might have been a, a mix up with uh, Justin and I, but um, I will contact him and see. <laughs> You've already dropped the ball once tonight, but I had telling Jennifer about the, the site walk. <laughs> no, I could have been there. Sorry. Oh, balls. And this shared calendar. You guys need to share your. We calendar. we got some pretty. Yeah. I my calendar's utilized. 
We'll have to have a discussion with. But you know what, guys? With informational items, I have some cool updates about the fire station for you. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, first let's do just do public comment. Did you have any public comments for this evening? Jody Rogers, 420 Portland Street. Um, I do think you guys should um, put a substantial fee on the licensing of facilities, and that in its in itself will be a little bit of just a gating factor of a lot of people that aren't really ready to do this mm -hmm. coming in and and um, thinking that's going to be a go. So I just want you to know I support that, and like I said, we're trying to. We would love to see more money come to the town than what the state's allowing. So. I think everyone would be up for that. All right. Thank you. All right. What do you got? So the new fire station is coming along really nicely. They are approximately, and I say that because one wall is not quite there yet, but um, 16 feet off the ground with the masonry wall building that they're putting up. So that's really cool. They've had a couple of issues with heaters, but they've done some plumbing in the ground. So everything's looking really nice over there. And they seem to be trucking right along so that's my cool update and it's probably really going to pick up once it gets warmer out oh yeah i mean those guys are working over there in the yeah. frigid cold snow ice rain whatever what are they looking at so, project completion september i don't know <laughs> i don't know I think, that. I think september right i don't know that i do know that they'll be working throughout the whole summer on it so but i don't know when their completion date is or projected okay so Anybody else? Any informational items? We are uh, planning some very cool things for the summer concert series. Stay tuned. <laughs> any uh, fireworks? Any updates from across the street? Oh yeah, good point. Um, Lee J and I we met with Julie Smith and Craig Burgess, right? Craig Burgess from Sebago Technics. Today. Today. <laughs> Um, and we um, went into the L-shaped building. We were locked out of the other buildings. Um, but we had a good discussion just about um, Section 6.4 and kind of what they're up against for um, our regulations. And they didn't seem to cringe too hard. Uh, we mentioned that, um, you know, we'd be, if there's something in there that's a, a plan killer, that I'll bring it to the board and we'll discuss um, amendments if that needs to happen. Uh, but they have um, the survey data from the Brownfield stuff. So that's a great starting point for them, that they're kind of already ahead of the game since they have that, and they have some of the, the stormwater and drainage. So we were talking about timeline. They can get ready to work, and they mentioned that they're hoping to have some conceptual drawings, and I believe the next community meeting with them is April 14th. So that'll be right here. And then uh, the next meeting from there is, is June. So um, things are moving and I think things will pick up. And, I, um, and I, I, I have no doubt that once concepts are being shared, that's when uh, it's gonna be a lot of excitement and it's gonna be, um, you know, I, the, the, the collaborative effort is, is kind of is now for the input and the way that John Smith puts it is they, they've kind of, they have the funnel and they're kind of coming down and they're going to start revising into something that's an actual plan. Um, so be on the lookout for that. So they're not going to break ground, no shovels in the ground they in the summer. About, they asked about, um, they, they, they can do, um, if they want to do uh, rehab on the buildings, they can do some of that. One of their big first challenges is getting all the, the metal and equipment out of there, out of those buildings. Um, so you could see that you're going to see surveyors on the property pretty soon. Um, in terms of um, ground breaking, uh, I, I think I've been saying as a timeline. I mean, I guess it could be optimistic or it might be realistic, but probably early early winter. It would be my um, my guess, but things things can things can change. But real, realistically, the the timeline is just. Con concepts in April, and we'll kind of see where the timeline is from there. That's really the most more accurate. Okay. Prognosis. Yeah. Anybody else? Next on the agenda is the adjournment.
a motion for adjournment of tonight, February 20th, regular planning board meeting. I'll second. Further, oh, there's no further discussion. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to keep going.